putting over the finish line in Bloomington and Minnetonka. And we're so excited you could all be with us here tonight. I'm Jean Massey and I'm the Executive Director of Fair Vote Minnesota, which has been a national estate leader for ranked choice voting uh, across the country. This is a very exciting moment here locally and across the country. And we are thrilled you could be with us to push ranked choice voting over the finish line. Bloomington and Minnetonka are two of a record seven cities and states poised to pass ranked choice voting this November, including the states of Massachusetts and Alaska. And to kick us off, I'm delighted to hand the stage to Minnetonka artist and Minnesota favorite, Anne Reed. Anne? Hi, thanks. I'm glad you're here, everybody. I, I had a bit of a problem thinking about, you know, a rousing song for the beginning because I don't really write rousing songs. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little depressed, maybe. I don't know. But um, so I thought um, what I would do, because it's called Fair Vote Minnesota. Some of you know it's coming, don't you? And, and that your executive director, I have heard tell, I heard rumor that she's absolutely nutty about the fair, that we, we need to do something that has the word Minnesota in it. So I'm kind of glad you're muted because if you start singing. Minnesota, Minnesota, we are south of Manitoba. We are east of North Dakota. We got something really rare. It's fulfilling, entertaining. It's true culture you be gaining. It'll blow you away. Yeah, sure, you bet. Boy, they don't know when to quit. I'm going to see the Potterhead. You want to come with Minnesota, Minnesota? We are south of Manitoba. We are east of North Dakota. We got something really rare. It's fulfilling, entertaining. It's true culture you be gaining. Except no imitations, it's the fair. At the fair, there's no lack of food. You simply take your pick. Find almost anything sitting on a stick. Mondo pups, mini donuts, and an ice cold beer. I gotta get my cheese curds, I've been waiting all year. Minnesota, Minnesota, we are south of Manitoba. We are east of North Dakota, we got something really rare. Filling, entertaining, it's true culture you be gaining. Except no imitations, it's the fair. After all the food I've eaten, And I'll probably lose my lunch. The tilt a whirl is one thing, but I just cannot conceal. My heart will stop right off the top of the double Ferris wheel. Minnesota, Minnesota, we are south of Manitoba. East of North Dakota, we got something really rare. It's fulfilling, entertaining, it's true culture you be gaining. Except no imitations, it's the fair. All you gotta see, Piggy Mama, the biggest sow that you have ever seen. It's a gig for a pig, but in a swine barn, piggy mama is a queen. Now the combines are waiting on machinery. Kids are climbing on the tractors, on their tires and on their grills. You live inside a townhouse in the suburbs, make your home. You've always wanted a tractor you could call your very own. Bravo, Anne. You tugged my personal heart. If we couldn't get to the fair this year, that was the next best thing to it. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, I, I actually did write a song about that there was no fair. I wrote one of those this year, too. And uh, I started to toy with the fact that you could say, Minnesota, Minnesota, we can go outside and vote. A, I don't know. It's just a <laughs> terrible rhyme. But uh, Well, uh, that did the trick, Anne. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Um, and a huge thank you to all the elected officials and candidates who are joining us today and rooting for Bloomington and Minnetonka. We'd like you to share in just three words and no more what ranked choice voting means to you. And I'm gonna call on you in alphabetical order. And if for some reason you couldn't join us, we'll just um, move on and let us know when you do come in and we'll 
call on you. Do we have a Hopkins School Board member, Fartoon Ahmed, with us? Unknown caller. Not seeing Hopkins School Board Chair Jen Bouchard. More diverse candidates. Great. Representative Andrew Carlson. Missing. Bloomington City Council Member Jenna Carter. Needed, smart, and inclusive. Awesome. Senator Steve Zorzinski. Representative Steve Elkins. No spoiler candidates. All right. Senator Melissa Franzen. Representative Mike Howard. Hopkins School Board Vice Chair Chris Latondras and candidate for Hennepin County Commission. Good government now. Representative Dave Pinto. Actually reflects preferences. Representative Lori Pryor. Hedge against partisanship. Great. Representative or Senator Ann Rest. Representative Steve Sandow. Three votes, not one. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Representative Kelly Morrison. Improve democracy now. All right. Senator Melissa Wickland. More public participation. Oh, great. Representative Dan Wolgamott. Fair, inclusive, lowercase d democratic. <laughs> All right. All right. And we have candidates. Did I miss any elected officials who are with us? Raise your hand. All right. Seeing none, we have some candidates with us. Jordan Fontanella running for House District 26B. Bad idea. Ralph Kaler running in Senate District 21. Get unmuted. As a farmer, my line, three words would be less political BS. <laughs> there you go. And uh, Liz Ryer, candidate running for House District 51B. And Bonnie Westland, I know you're with us, in Senate District 34. Restoring our democracy. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you all played that game really, really well. We appreciate that a lot. And if anyone else comes on, we'll give you uh, time to say your three words. That was inspiring. <clears throat> so now I have the pleasure of introducing our local oh, leaders. Look. Jean, this is Ann Ress, and I have. Oh, I, have I thought I. Oh my gosh, Senator Ress. That's okay. Oh, oh mine save is the best for last. My uh, mine is similar to. Um, Bonnie's and it is a uh, 21st century democracy. Oh, well, those are great parting words. Thank you so much, Senator Rust, and sure. for your longtime leadership on this issue. And yeah. thank you all for helping lead this movement forward here in Minnesota. Your voices are so essential. So now um, I get to introduce our local leaders of the Bloomington and Minnetonka campaigns. They have been leading the campaigns with vision, tenacity, and most importantly, with a strong sense of community. First, Minnetonka. Far Westmoreland is a part of the fa a family that has lived in Minnetonka for four generations. She is well known for her commitment and service to the community on issues of hunger, education, equality. All you need to do is watch our We Can Fix It video, forthcoming, to get a glimmer of the magic Barb brings to, uh, to the campaign and to the community. David Haig is full of energy and is a damn good thing he holds <clears throat> down the fort <clears throat> with three children while his wife works on the front lines of the COVID pandemic as an HCNC doctor. He is a, an experienced marketing professional and now he can add rock star community organizer to his resume. Thank you, Barb and David for leading the way in Minnetonka. In Bloomington, Laura Calboni, I met at an event and she has stepped up ever since she learned about the power of ranked choice voting to transform our democracy for the better. And like David, 
She holds down the fort with two young kids and is a marketing and communications professional. Lucky for the campaigns. You have been, you may have seen these two in their ranked choice voting one on 101 videos that were uh, put up a couple of weeks ago. They are fabulous. They're getting quite famous because of them. And we may need to start a fan club for the many followers they now have. And Laura's organizing partner in Bloomington is Marsha Watson. She is a retired librarian and a member of the League of Women Voters. I have known, I've never known such a natural community organizer as Marsha. And when she decides to put her volunteerism to work, she really gets things done. These four have done an outstanding job moving the campaigns forward in Minnesota, and they're going to need your help and support during this final push. I'll let you know how you can help towards the end of the campaign. Let me now welcome Laura Calboni and David Haig. Laura, can you start us off? Thanks, Jean. Um, ranked choice voting gives me hope during this often discouraging time in our politics. I'm inspired that this simple change empowers voters and encourages candidates to focus on the issues and appeal to more voters. For the past year and a half, Marsha and I and our volunteers have talked to Bloomington residents across the political spectrum who are ready for change. And so we are thrilled that Bloomington voters have a chance to adopt ranked choice voting to elect our mayor and city council members starting next year. Ranked choice voting is about strengthening our democracy. It's about putting power in the hands of voters. It opens up the process to new diverse candidates. It makes sure winners are supported by a majority of voters. It encourages positive campaigning based on issues voters care about. And to top it off, it saves tax dollars by eliminating the primary that only five to 10% of Bloomington voters participate in. There are 16 days until the election. We need to reach as many voters as possible. Please sign up to help us make phone calls, talk to, email, and text your friends and family in Bloomington and Minnetonka and encourage them to vote yes for ranked choice voting. We have many volunteers who are new to helping with the campaign, and we love that ranked choice voting is bringing hope to people and inspiring them to take action. This is the time to get involved. Our democracy and the everyday people who live in it are worth fighting for. Thanks to all our supporters who are already helping. And thanks to those of you who will pledge your support today. Thank you, Laura. Uh, and thank you for your leadership in Bloomington. We are going to get this over the finish line. David Haig, are you here online? I am. Can you hear me OK? Hi, David. Great. So I, I feel pretty good right now. I think we're all a little bit nervous, but we feel like there's opportunity ahead of us. We started organizing about two years ago, like Laura. All I knew is that ranked choice voting was a good idea and it felt like the time had come and if more people knew about this, they would like it. And it has been so gratifying for me and for Barb and for other people I see in the room today who are part of our early effort to go and talk with just regular voters to explain how this worked and to see the light bulb turn on in their head when they realized, oh, I get it. And it, I like it, and it's a good thing. So you can't unsee um, the so the, the inherent logic and in how this works. Um, now we have so many high-profile endorsements; it makes my head spin. And I think most positively for me, we have five city council members who are now openly supporting ranked choice voting. Um, when elected people acknowledge that there's a better way to vote than the one that elected them, and they're ready to change it for their own elections it says something really powerful and both about them and about the opportunity to make things better. So while I'm optimistic, I have to admit, I'm a little bit nervous um, because you never really know what's gonna happen. And so there's a saying, the only way out is through and action is the right way to respond to anxiety, at least in my world. <laughs> so I'd encourage each of you to do something Whatever it is, uh, if you want to donate, if you want to give time, if you just want to talk to friends and neighbors, whatever that is, commit to talking to 10 people that you know are maybe undecided voters or people that maybe lean more conservative. This is a political issue that should embrace everybody. Um, talk to them, tell them why ranked choice voting matters. Heck, get them to take a yard sign. We still have some of those to give out. Um, I have three small kids and this has been a really hard year to sort of convince myself that 
things are going to get better. Just around the corner, things are going to get better. And it feels like we've been knocked back several times. But on November 3rd, we can really actually make things better. We can fix this. All we have to do is vote. That's the promise of our country, our democracy. We have an opportunity not to preserve, not just to preserve and protect the integrity of our current system, but to literally and figuratively expand and reform it and to light it for other people. And that's just, it's so exciting. It gets me out of bed at night and in the morning and sometimes at night. And so I wanna thank everybody for coming today, for caring about this issue, for everything you've done so far. We couldn't have made it this far without you and we're not gonna get across the finish line without your help. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dave and Laura and um, everybody on the call. Let's not disappoint uh, Laura and David by not making a donation and by not volunteering. So in your chat box are opportunities to do both. You can click and donate right now, especially if you haven't had a chance to do that already coming into the event and sign up for at least one thing to do between now and election day to get these two campaigns over the finish line. So while you're busy doing those things, I'll see if there are any more elected officials or candidates who have joined us. I believe John Olson running in the Red Wing area has joined us. John, you've got a second to say three words about ranked choice voting. Uh, stronger American democracy. Awesome. And Anybody and else? That's actually Senate District 20, not, not Red Wing. Oh, sorry, District 20. Uh, I'm a school board member. Oh, who's speaking? Oh, great. Hi, Maya. Hi. Three words. Um, promotes, school board. promotes positive campaigning. Great. Anybody else? All right. Thank you very much. And now um, we have uh, with us today, our lead host, Sam Boren. It is my privilege to introduce Sam, who will in turn introduce Congressman Dean Phillips today. The summer before COVID, Sam and her husband, Steve King, hosted a ranked choice voting wine tasting at their Minnetonka Lakeside home to kick off the campaigns for ranked choice voting in Bloomington and Minnetonka. With her I'm all in leadership, it is not surprising at all to see the campaigns poised to win in just a couple of weeks. She has been with the campaign since the beginning, fundraising, making calls, testifying to the city council, and being an evangelist for the cause wherever she goes. Sam is a compassionate and generous philanthropist with a huge heart. She is a retired corporate executive who has devoted her time to protecting the environment empowering women and saving our democracy. We are so lucky that she has focused her time and talent and passion on our campaign to make ranked choice voting how our democracy works in Minnesota. Welcome, Sam. Thank you, Jean. Um, I'm so happy to be here to introduce Dean today, although I expect most of you know him well. It feels to me like Dean has been representing us in Congress for more, much longer than the two years that he's been our representative. He hit the ground running with a high impact campaign, declaring everyone's invited. Well, almost everyone. PACs and lobbyists aren't very welcome. So Dean continues to fund his campaign with money from all of us. His work on campaign finance reform clean water, gun violence prevention, and immigration reform are just a few of the ways that he's making a difference for all of us. I love Dean's optimism and his worldview that says anything is possible. He's deeply committed to inclusion and offering everyone a seat at the table. He demonstrated that when he helped to launch the Prop Problem Solvers Caucus, this group is composed of representatives from across the country and from both sides of the aisle who are committed to finding common ground on many of the issues facing our nation. We can thank Dean's two daughters, Daniela and Pia for encouraging him to run for office. And now we can also thank his wonderful wife, Annalise for supporting his passionate pursuit of justice and a better democracy. Dean has been an incredible evangelist for ranked choice voting. 
he stood up early and often to declare his support. And here he is again to help us sprint to the finish line for ranked choice voting. Dean, thank you for your leadership in Washington and here in Minnesota. We're so grateful you could join us tonight. Well, Sam, thank you so much for your beautiful introduction and my campaign chauffeur, Annalise, <laughs> also sends her love. That was very kind of you. Uh, greetings, thank you again, Sam, to you, Jean, and to all of you, my fellow electeds, and everybody that has adopted ranked choice voting uh, as your electoral mission. Uh, from the very beginning, I was a skeptic, and Jean can remember this, but she spoon-fed me, and I have the very spoon right here. Spoon-fed me, RCV, RCV, I went to events, I started looking into it, and it finally, I had an epiphany that my personal mission is, pers is intersected with ranked choice voting, which is to encourage better candidates who better and more ably can represent the districts and the people uh, that vote. And it doesn't favor Democrats or Republicans, it favors the best candidates. And we've never needed that more in our country than we do right now. And if we can push Bloomington and Minnetonka over the finish line, that's how this will all spread around the country. Uh, one town, one village, one city at a time, which then becomes uh, the whole country. In theory. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to trying to direct directions and uh, do this. Um, anyhow, uh, I want to thank you all because uh, I'm a believer. My colleague Jared Golden from the state of Maine was elected in a ranked choice election just in 2018, a wonderful member of Congress. Uh, and we now need to spread the word. Uh, we need to be evangelical RCVers and nothing makes me more proud and excited to do so. Uh, as you might know, I love it so much, I introduced the Voter Choice Act with Angus King and Senator Bennett from Colorado. We provided $40 million uh, to actually provide incentives and resources to townships and villages and cities that adopt ranked choice voting. Uh, so we're gonna push that forward, hopefully in the 117th Congress, uh, and let's show the rest of the state, the rest of the country, what we can do if we entertain and, and implement a better way to do things. So that's my pitch. I love you all. I'm grateful. And most of all, keep the faith. You know, the next couple of weeks and then next few months are going to be tough ones. But I really do believe that if we fulfill our mission to expand ranked choice voting, that five, 10, 20 years from now, uh, we're going to look back on quite a legacy. So I celebrate all of you, the leaders of the Minot I'm sorry, the uh, Bloomington and Minnetonka initiatives, and Eugene, who've made this your mission for so long uh, and converted so many of us. Uh, I honor you. I respect you. And I say onwards, my friends. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thank you so much, Dean. And keep that spoon and keep feeding others with that spoon. <laughs> RCB, yum, 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 yum. The RCB spoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, thanks so much for being with us, Dean, on a busy day. I see you're on the road. And uh, do you have time to, to answer a few questions people might yeah, have? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. So in the chat box, I hope everyone's Putting your questions in there, we have Aaron Zamop with us, who is our Director of Communications and Public Affairs, who's going to uh, read the questions. And uh, Dean, we'd love to spend five to 10 minutes uh, seeing what people have to ask you. Aaron? Okay, so the first question is for Dean. Um, what level of support is there for ranked choice voting in particular and democracy reform in general in the Congress? So, Democracy reform in general is, um, is very much a primary focus of a lot of members. Um, in fact, I expect that HR1, which was our, uh, one of our most important bills uh, in the 116th Congress, will also be probably HR1 in the next Congress. Uh, I've already spoken with John Sarbanes about that. It's not ranked choice voting specific by any stretch, but it is electoral reforms making voting easier. And I believe it opens the door to do a whole lot more. Uh, part of our challenge um, is actually to entertain the same kind of strategy that we're employing here in Minnesota, which is to plant the seeds in cities and, and smaller municipalities, um, get people accustomed to it, um, get voters to understand how much better it is, and then slowly but surely expand it um, you know, statewide, and then ultimately, perhaps at the federal level, which would be something I would love to see happen. But uh, ultimately, this takes all of you uh, and many more of us than are on the call right now to become ambassadors and advocates and spread the good word because uh, members of Congress are not well educated on it. Uh, they're somewhat dismissive, many, um, but that doesn't make it a bad thing. That makes it an opportunity. And I think there's going to be a new spirit of innovation and a new spirit um, of electoral reform initiatives, particularly 
uh, if we do flip the Senate and the White House on November 3rd, uh, I do think that is going to make a big difference uh, because, frankly, Democrats right now are a little bit more enlightened as it comes to um, implementing some of these changes. So that's my that's my hope. But I got to remind everybody, it doesn't favor one party or the other. It favors good candidates who can appeal to more than just their base. That means it helps uh, the red candidate in blue districts and it helps blue candidates in red districts. And that's not a bad thing for America. Great, great. Um, and we have a question, Gene, for, this could be for Dean or for the organizers. Tell us about your best conversation with a voter about ranked choice voting. Jean, do you wanna? Laura, I know you just shared one um, on Team Slack <laughs> uh, from yesterday. Why don't you share that story? It was a really great story. And speaking to Dean's uh, comment right now that this is not a partisan issue. It really speaks to building uh, democracy where candidates can uh, win with a majority and uh, both parties should be embracing that idea. Mm -hmm. Laura? Yeah, so um, just this weekend, um, we talked to a voter in Bloomington and he comes from a family of lifelong Republicans and they had received their kind of package of yard signs from their party and included in that was a no to ranked choice voting sign. They didn't really know much about ranked choice voting but they put the sign up. And then um, their son was watching YouTube and saw the ranked choice voting three minute explainer video and thought, wow, this is awesome. I think this sounds great. And then as luck would have it, Marsha called him up <laughs> um, as part of our voter calls. And so he had the opportunity to talk to Marsha and get all his questions answered about ranked choice voting. And at the end of that conversation, he was totally sold. He wanted a yard sign, you know? Um, and so then when I went to deliver the yard sign, I was able to uh, talk to his father uh, for another 15 minutes or so. Um, his dad had all sorts of questions for me and I answered his questions and he was very cordial. It was a very productive conversation um, and really one that I really wish that we could have more of, um, kind of where people are able to have a conversation about something, about a policy and um, be respectful and ask questions and be inquisitive. Um, and at the end of the conversation, um, he asked for my phone number. I gave him my phone number in case he has more questions. And he said that he is definitely considering um, voting for ranked choice voting and that his son is totally sold. So it was great. That's awesome. Thank you, Laura. The power of conversations. Dean, do you have anything to add to that? No. Gene, I've had, I've had so many wonderful conversations with voters, not just in the third district, but um, in other parts of Minnesota and Minneapolis and um, in other cities. And you know, though it's, it's the same story time and time again. Uh, didn't quite understand it, therefore didn't like it, then tried it, and now I see the light. And um, it's the same mechanics time and time again. So I can't even think of one particular story other than a lot of people becoming enlightened, especially people who are concerned about decency in politics and concerned about divisions and discord and further, further separating voters from one another. And, and that's the most beautiful stories I hear from those who are converts, if you will, are people who recognize the great power of ranked choice voting to um, reduce uh, the tenor and tone, um, the mean spirited tenor and tone of politics. And that's what I hear time and time again. And you gosh knows we're all going to need that after this election. So I think this is our time. Yes, we are. Well, thank you for being the nation's most passionate evangelist on ranked choice voting. We are so grateful to have you here in Minnesota. And I think we'll just move on because we promised to have everyone out here in, in 45 minutes. So we'll uh, go on to our, our next uh, section. And I now have the additional honor today of introducing Mike Osterholm, Dr. Mike Osterholm who of course needs no introduction to this crowd as an internationally renowned ep epidemiologist fighting on the front lines of the pandemic every single day. You probably see him multiple times a day on some program on TV. Thank you for your voice, Mike, for on, on addressing our pandemic. You, <clears throat> you may not know that Mike also serves on the Fair Vote Minnesota board and is a passionate voice for ranked choice voting. 
when he is not fighting a pandemic, he's working to leave the legacy of a better democracy for the next generation. Welcome, Mike, and please let everyone here know what they can do to push ranked choice voting over the finish line here in Minnesota. Well, thank you very much, Jean. It's a real honor to be with you. And I want to thank everyone for your work on creating a stronger, more inclusive and resilient democracy. Uh, before I launch into maybe more, a little more formal comments, I just have to say today, I, I'm struck by this. Uh, you know, I'm spending a lot of my time these days swimming in boiling water. Uh, and so to be at a, <laughs> on a call like this is such a, a wonderful feeling. And it reminds me, I just have to tell this story that uh, a number of years ago, I heard an interview with the late great Harry Chapin, the balladeer, and he was commenting on a conversation he had with the late Pete Seeger. And he, it was during the time of Vietnam, and he was asking Pete, why did he go out and do all of these uh, f fundraisers and, and these sit-ins and so forth? Did it really make any difference? And Pete looked at Harry and he said, you know, Harry, I don't know if it does or not, but every night that I go to bed and put my head in that pillow, I know I spent the day with the good people. I was with the good people. And you know, when I get on these calls and I participate in these events, I, I can take away from my day of swimming in boiling water. At least I had a few minutes with the good people. And so thank you for all of that, for all of you. So uh, let me just go ahead and say, if you look around the world and the response that's occurred or has not occurred with regard to COVID-19, it lines up almost perfectly with the functionality of the government in that country. And until we have functional government, I don't believe we will see a functional society respond to this pandemic in an effective way that we desperately need to have happen. Uh, as I noted this morning in an appearance on Meet the Press, uh, we are entering the darkest months of this pandemic. The next six to 12 weeks for certain will be really challenging. And we don't have a functional response to it. That is why I think ranked choice voting is so important. Um, it, is, it does bring the best of our leaders out and that we're able to, at that point, begin to solve problems on behalf of the American public. And so I just wanna say that from, from the standpoint of where I see us at and what we need to do, we will not have partisan uh, politics out of public health or the kinds of major problems we have until we can have nonpartisan ranked choice voting. Uh, so I think it's so important that people understand that and that they see what in fact it is that we're looking for in terms of, of the issue of ranked choice voting. No one, one thing is gonna solve all of our issues, but if there was a legacy we can leave our kids and grandkids, it is supporting ranked choice voting. And we have to understand that now, bringing about a more civil, more effective and more trusting form of government is the most important thing we can leave them. And I think that it would by itself be a legacy that will far surpass any I know I will be part of. In fact, if I can be a helpful part of bringing this forward. So please do what you can and give what you can to support these two campaigns today. Go to the chat, and make a donation right now and sign up to volunteer for at least one action between now and election day. Together we will win and continue to build momentum for ranked choice footing in Minnesota. Besides just having the chance to work with uh, Gene is a gift all by itself. And I promise once you start working with ranked choice voting, you will never leave. Kind of reminds me of that old song of the Eagles, Hotel California. You can check out, but you will never leave. And, uh, and Gene, I promise, will make that happen in the most wonderful way. So now, before Gene closes us out, the fabulous Ann Reed, thank you, Ann, will play her song, We Will. And for those of us who are in this movement to save our democracy for the long haul, I know you're going to enjoy this very much. Thank you. And you're on mute. While Anne is getting ready, I'll remind everybody once more to go to the chat box and make a donation. Click on the volunteer. And um, after Anne is done, I'll come back and just have a couple of comments. So Anne, take it away. This is all the road we've set our feet upon. road we've set our feet upon and with loving hearts we walk on loving hearts walk on we walk on we
Riches are filled with gold and ham. Riches are filled with gold and ham. And we begin to heal the world. We begin to heal the world. We Bravo, and thank you so much. And we will win, <laughs> indeed. Thank you for inspiring us and giving us hope with, with your uh, very gorgeous music. We all leave energized and ready to see Bloomington and Minnetonka finish over the, uh, get over the finish line on ranked choice voting. And uh, before I make my final, final two remarks, I want to ask if uh, school board chair in Minnetonka in, in Hopkins, Jen Bouchard is now on. We have two more people to leave us with some inspiring three words on ranked choice voting. Jen, are you on? I'm on. I did my three words already. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, well um, but my, my school board colleague Shannon Andreessen's on the call, I believe. Oh, well, then we'll take her. Let's do it. Shannon? Hi. Um, I don't necessarily have three words, but um, I'm just very supportive. I feel like this is the kind of campaigning I did when I was running for school board and it was energizing and wonderful. And I, I don't know why anyone would want to campaign any other way. Awesome. Well, let's pass the local options bill and bring ranked choice voting to school boards in Minnesota. That's the answer. And Senator Steve Swazinski, are you still on online? I am. All right. Three words are yours. Oh, I already said my three. Oh, I'm. Oh, I'm getting all because I can't see you all on the little screens. I'm getting confused. All right. Well, ignore that. Thanks for um, um, thinking I did. I appreciate your that. All right. Well, 
um, to all of you candidates and led, elected leaders with us tonight and all of the rest of you joining in to help us build a better democracy here in Minnesota. Thank you. And one more reminder, if you haven't yet donated or signed up to volunteer, do that now. We have a phone bank starting at five o'clock. There's no need to wait to jump right in to help us get started. And there's a Zoom link in chat for you to click on and you'll be greeted with some nice volunteers to get you started on a phone bank. Some of you may have phone banked already this year. You know what that's like. If not, believe me, it's a lot of fun and we'll make it really easy for you. So we hope you will join us. So now let's go in and have a great evening, everybody. Good night.